Trouble with these interesting problems is they take a while to do, don't they? I promise you, <coughs> we'll only have one uh, Kuhn Tucker problem on the final exam. Oh, the exam, I'm, the exam will be three hours. So you'll have enough time. Okay. All right, let's go over the quiz while it's still uh, fresh in your minds. Um, Ian has the this utility function. U equals x squared. times y. Why well, this is a brand new marker. It's still giving me trouble. Where x is the number of donuts per week and y is uh, the amount of coffee per week. Uh, Ian really likes donuts, don't you, Ian? Okay. Um, the price of uh, donuts and the price of coffee are each one dollar. Coffee is cups and donuts is just measured in donuts, quantity of donuts. Ian has a weekly income of fifty dollars. Okay. And uh, Ian's doctor has uh, put him on a, a diet which is no more than 4,000 uh, calories per week. Each donut has 200 calories. So uh, let's say C sub X is 200 calories per donut. Each coffee is 50 uh, calories per cup. Okay. And uh, his total calories have to be less than 4,000. So this would give us the constraint okay. total calories would be 200x plus 50y. Has to be less than or equal to 4,000. Now our income constraint would just be what? Yeah, yeah. x plus y, since the price of x and the price of y are each one, this has to be less than or equal to 50. Okay, so those are the constraints, and this is the thing Ian wants to maximize. Okay. So what is our Lagrangian function for this problem? What's our Lagrangian function? Anybody? Ian, you want to tell me what your Lagrange function is? Well, I thought it was just 2,000 calories per donut, but the, the right Lagrangian function. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. It is 200 calories per donut. 2,000, that would be a really high caloric donut, 2,000. It makes a lot more sense because I got like, I would eat one and one third donuts. Oh, okay. That's why your answers were so strange. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. So noting that, what would our what would your Lagrange function be? Uh, x squared y. Yes. Okay. And what do what do we start with? Uh, z. So we, oh, z. Z. Let's use z. Following Chang. Z equals. Go ahead, Ian. X squared y. Yeah. That's the thing you want to maximize. Okay, let's just call that uh, lambda one. Uh, you could use some other notation, but let me just call that lambda one. Lambda one times what? Uh, 50 minus x minus one. Yes. Plus 
plus Right. Okay. Okay. Very good. Uh, this is our objective function that we're trying to maximize. Subject to these constraints, that this uh, be uh, greater than or equal to zero, and this be greater than or equal to zero. Or, in other words, that your expenditure, x plus y, is less than or equal to 50. Your calories consumed less than or equal to 4,000. Okay. So, once you've got the Lagrangian, then you look at your uh, first order conditions. And the first order conditions are going to be as follows. I'll just call it z sub x, partial derivative of z with respect to x. z sub x will be what? Anybody? What is z sub x? 2xy. Okay, mine, yes, exactly. Equals, well, actually, what, what, what I'm going to do, the Kuhn Tucker conditions require that this be less than or equal to zero. However, I'm going to set it equal to zero by assuming what's true. What am I, if I set that equal to zero, what am I assuming? X is greater than zero. Yes, that X is greater than zero. Now that's going to be a natural assumption to make because utility, if X is zero, utility is going to be zero. You know you can do better than that. So let's just assume X is positive. Then by complementary slackness, uh, partial Z, partial X has to be a zero. Okay, and what is z sub y? x squared minus lambda 1. Yes, it'll be x squared minus lambda 1. Okay. And let's assume that this is 0. That assumes that y is greater than 0. Do I need to back up and talk about the Kuhn-Tucker conditions, or are you all familiar with those? Okay, by complementary slackness. We know, to, we know that partial z partial x times x has to be zero. So uh, if x is positive, then partial z partial x must be zero. Okay. Okay, so these two equations involve uh, four unknowns, x, y, lambda 1, lambda 2. So let's see if we can uh, go further. We know another part of the first order conditions is that z, partial derivative of z with respect to lambda 1, uh, be uh, greater than or equal to 0. Now, uh, let's assume that lambda 1 is positive. Okay then if we assume lambda 1 is positive, what does that mean about partial z, partial lambda 1? Exactly. By complementary slackness, this would have to be 0. So partial z, partial lambda 1, notice is just 50 minus x minus y. Set that equal to zero. Now we're assuming lambda one is a greater than zero. That might be a mistake, but we're going to assume that for right now. And let's also assume uh, 
that lambda 2 is positive. If we take the partial derivative of z with respect to lambda 2, that is just 4,000 minus 200x minus 50y. Set that equal to 0. And we're going to assume lambda 2 is greater than 0. In other words, we're going to assume that uh, both of these constraints are binding, okay, that the individuals on both of these constraints, that the individual is using all of uh, Ian in this case. Ian's using all of his income, we're assuming, and Ian is following the doctor's orders about his calories. Okay. Uh, and he's consuming exactly 4,000 calories. Could consume less, but we're assuming he's consuming 4,000. Okay. Now, look at these two equations. There's two equations and two unknowns, so right away we can solve for x and y. So let's do that. From these two equations, we can solve for x and y. And doing so, what do you get? Yes, I'll just assert that. You could use Kramer's rule. Notice if you rewrite these equations, you could rewrite them like this. X plus Y equals 50. That's really the budget constraint. The other one is 200X plus 50Y equals 4,000. And use Kramer's rule or some other rule, substitution rule, solve for X and Y. And what you get are x equals 10 and y equals 40. Okay. Um, and that will exactly satisfy both of those equations. Okay. Now let's go back with those values of x and y. Let's substitute into these two equations and solve for lambda 1 and lambda 2. So, uh, what we get is as follows. We get, uh, well, let me just write it out. Let's write out this equation right here. Let me bring the lambda 1 plus 200 lambda 2 over to the right. Uh, so this would be 2xy equals a lambda 1 plus 200 lambda 2. Do the same thing with this equation here, and we would write that as x squared equals a lambda 1 plus 50 lambda 2. Now substitute in our values of x and y, and let's see, x was 10, y was 40, so uh, we could rewrite this equation as lambda 1 plus 200 lambda 2. Let me write the constant over on the right-hand side. It would be 800, wouldn't it? Let me do the same thing here. This is 10 squared is 100. Let me write the 100 over here. Okay. So we have these two equations. Two equations for two unknowns. Uh, we can solve them using Kraber's rule. And what is the problem when you solve, uh, let's say for lambda 1, using Kraber's rule? Lambda 1 would be the determinant in the, uh, of the coefficient matrix, which goes in the denominator, would be 1, 200, 
a 1, 50. Okay. Up here in the numerator, we would have 800, 100, 250. Okay. Now, let's do this. Uh, determine it down here. It's 50 minus 200 is minus 150. What do we get here? 50 times uh, 800 is what? 4,000? Minus 100 times 200 is 2,000. So you get 2,000 over minus 150. Clearly this is negative. Okay. So we have a problem, don't we? We assumed that lambda 1 was positive. But when we solve for lambda 1, we get to a negative value. And what is the interpretation of lambda 1 here? We don't have our Lagrange function, but... Right. Marginal utility of income is negative here. So that means you're clearly, um, you're consuming too much of your income. So what does that suggest that we do? Notice the fact that we got a negative lambda one, that's a violation of the Kuhn-Tucker conditions. One of the Kuhn-Tucker conditions is that lambda one be greater than or equal to zero. So what does that suggest that we change? Yes, let's assume that lambda 1 is equal to 0. Now, if we assume lambda 1 is uh, equal to 0, then go back to this equation right here. Okay? And put in lambda 1 equals 0. So that equation will now become this. Uh, 2xy uh, minus 200 lambda 2 equals 0. Because lambda 1 just drops out. Okay. Uh, go to that second equation, and it would be x squared uh, minus 50 lambda 2 equals 0. And if you solve for lambda 2, you'll get a relationship between x and y. Notice from that first equation, lambda 2 is 2xy divided by 200. From this equation, you just solve for lambda 2. You get lambda 2 is equal to x squared uh, divided by 50. Just bring this 50 lambda 2 over, divide by 50. Okay, so what does this mean? Let's concentrate on this part right here. And you could write 100 cross multiply. So 100xy, multiply that times that, equals 200x2 squared. Okay, x squared. Uh, divide both sides by 100, you get xy equals 2x squared. Divide both sides by x, and you get y equals 2x. Now we have a relationship between y and x. Uh, let's go to this equation. Let's continue to assume that lambda 2 is greater than 0. So that means this equation will still hold. Okay. We know this equation doesn't hold because we got a negative lambda 1 value. But let's assume lambda 2 is greater than 0. Um, so then you just take that equation, which says 200x plus 50y equals 4,000. We know that y is equal to 2x, so we can say <laughs> 200x 
plus 50 times 2x equals 4,000. Or we have um, uh, 300x equals 4,000. Or we have x equals 4,000 over 300. Okay, and get rid of the two zeros there. We get x equals 40 over 3. Okay. Notice y is 2x, so y would be 80 over 3. Let's see if that solution works. Uh, notice we know this constraint will be satisfied because that's what we use to get that. Uh, and notice this constraint right here would be 50 minus 40 over 3 minus 80 over 3 uh, equals, um, let's see, this would be 50 minus 120 over 3, which is 40. So it's 50 minus 40 equals 10. So what that means is um, Ian is only using um, $40 worth of his income. He has $10 uh, left over. Okay. But that's okay because what we're getting is partial z, partial lambda 1. All we require by the Kuhn-Tucker is it be greater than or equal to zero. Uh, and it is. Lambda 1 here is zero. And uh, lambda 1 times partial z, partial lambda 1, is zero by complementary slackness. That's the complementary slackness condition. Lambda 1 equals 0, obviously that's satisfied. Okay. So all of the constraints are satisfied. Uh, so this is the solution. This is the optimal solution. And what's interesting about this solution is Ian doesn't use all of his income. He is consuming 4,000 calories per week but he's not using all his income. So I find this a little bit troubling. And the reason this happens, and in this particular model, there's only two things you can use your income for, donuts and coffee. Uh, so, but in the real world, we know you consume more than food. So if you had some non-food items in the utility function, obviously you would be spending all your income. because it wouldn't affect the calorie constraint at all, but it would bump up your utility. So it's a little bit troubling in that sense. It's a kind of a limited problem uh, for a consumer who doesn't consume any non-food items. So it's kind of a limitation of the problem. But it's technically, this is correct. Okay. And what does this look like in a diagram? It looks like this.